Hey guys, it's Sir Redeemer, and today I am bringing you a tutorial on getting your first ship and outfitting it and exactly what all of that entails. So, to start us off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a new ship. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Cobra Mark III. And we'll just buy it out, right? And so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to explain what everything does and what like an optimal, um, what an optimal configuration is for what you want to do. Now, what I primarily do is dogfighting, bounty hunting, uh, conflict zone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I almost always have full combat builds, and so. What I'm going to go ahead and do with this then is kind of explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Um, there we go. That looks much, much better. Okay. So, we have two sets of, well, really three. We have three tabs here. Uh, first is hard points. That's all of our weapons and our utility mounts, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, internal, which is much more complicated. This is your shield, this is how much cargo you have, this is all of your uh, straight up... Um, these are all of your critical systems here, like your sensors, your power, your life support, etc. Uh, then the... So, okay, so this is actually new. Uh, I did not know they had little dashboard things. That's a cool little update. So I assume that you can put like little bobbleheads or little statues or things on your uh, on your dashboard now, which is nice. Um, then you've got your full paint jobs, which unfortunately you have to buy all of these, but um, I was okay doing that because it looks really nice. Um, then you have decals. So as you as you unlock things through either trading, through combat, etc., you unlock new. You unlock new icons, and as you can see, that actually looks pretty sweet. Um, so, let's start off with hard points. How you want to build your ship. Um, so, there are two, uh, two weapon damage types. There's energy, or thermic, I think is what they call it, and kinetic. So, let's go into... Um, Price ascending, sure. Okay, so lasers. Your best friends for melting shields. I actually almost always run um, all, almost always run all, um, all lasers because they have no ammo count. It's completely their ability to fire is completely based off of how much power you're generating um, and your power flow from your distributor, which I will get into as well. But um, so you have three types of actual beams. There's this mining laser, but that's really not a weapon. Uh, that's get that's mining, which is another function of the game. But uh, you have your pulse laser, burst laser, and then beam laser. Now, uh, pulse laser is I would actually say it's one of it's like the basic uh, basic laser weapon. It fires on, on an interval of every of two shots or one and a half shots a second uh, with a steady rate of fire so it's a good balance between um, damage and being able to continuously fire without your weapons overheating or without um, running out of um, uh, laser, I'm sorry not laser um, weapon energy, there we go and um, then you have burst lasers which are a little bit more intense on your energy systems but it does more damage Right, yeah, it does more damage. It has a slower rate of fire, but it's because it's basically a three-burst weapon out of any first-person shooters. And then you have um, Beam, and Beam's Melt Face. It's a constant, as it implies, it's a constant um, beam of laser that fires until you're out of um, until you're out of energy or until your systems start heating up too much. Now, as well as you know, and that's those are just the laser. Those are just the thermic 
weapons. That's not getting into the kinetic, or I think there's like kinetic thermic for weapons like railguns, which I don't know if they have them here or not. But then, as well as that, there are multiple mounts. There are fixed mounts, which this mining laser, mining laser is a fixed mount, always. But uh, what a fixed mount is, is your weapons are locked in place. They are always facing forward. So that also means that with kinetic weapons, uh, cannons, uh, um, what am I looking for? Multi-cannon right here. Um, you have to lead your shots because you you have real-time travel um, with all of your shots. So fixed is okay. Uh, I personally don't like it, but you get more damage. You get much more damage out of a fixed mount. So a lot of people will run all of their weapon mounts um, fixed and then get ridiculous damage out of it. So they don't really care if they miss. Um, but personally, I don't like it. It's kind of hard to use. Um, but that could be me just being a baby. Um, next is uh, Gimbled. What Gimbled is, is Gimbled is basically it gives a cone in front of your ship where your weapons will auto-track. Um, so if they go a little bit above your, um, your reticule, your ship will auto-track and continue firing on them. Um, even if you're, you know, even if you're not spot on, which is uh, super useful. That's actually what I use the most because um, it gives less damage than gives less damage than fixed, but it gives more damage than turreted, which I will get into next. And turreted is it will fire on everything um, in the available uh, field of vision of that mount. So. Here, let's see if I can get out of here and I can help explain this better. So, uh, here we go. So this is good. This is good. So here, oh, I can't make my ship move. That's a bummer. So there is roughly a 180 degree firing arc or a dome shape, if you um, if you can imagine that. And uh, from these weapon mounts here, it's going to fire. Be able to fire on almost directly behind me, and um, basically anything a little bit below my bow. And what this does is this allows you to, if you're flying a slow ship, it allows you to continuously put fire on enemies uh, with your top mounts um, while trying to outturn them. So it's very powerful um, if you have a very slow ship and high level mounts, high class mounts I should say. Um, but it's not particularly useful for smaller ships. So, but it's, it's, I've found it great for dueling other players because you're always, it always comes into a game of who can turn faster than the other. Um, and this pretty much will just continuously put fire on them. It's, they're not very accurate. They don't do much damage, but they will always be putting fire on someone, whether or not you can see them or not. So, that is a very potent, very potent tool. So now we'll go into the uh, other weapons. The, we'll go into kinetic. You have um, torpedoes, which are a single fire, super high damage, um, super high damage uh, missile. Uh, they come in heat seeking and non heat seeking, so some of them you have to lead. Uh, you have mine launchers, which are defensive weapons. You pop it and you throw mines out uh, behind you, and I think they have. No, they don't heat seek but they will uh, blow up in proximity if they're triggered by um, enemies. Um, you've got missile, rack, uh, missile racks. Um, now this one's a dumb fire. Shock mines. I have not seen those. I think that's a new weapon. Um, but uh, missile racks are dumb fire or heat seeking. I use heat seekings all the time because they are high damage and they are ridiculous. Um, multi cannons are awesome. They are Gatling guns. They're basically ship-sized Gatling guns and they are... Um, I don't know if I like them that much. I've used them a lot, but I don't know... I honestly don't really have a good feel for what I get m the most damage out of. So, I use them sometimes because their ammo lasts forever, but, um, but I don't usually end up using them. So, uh, cannons, in my opinion, though, which I think is the last, yeah it is, the last uh, kinetic weapon is just basically 
a howitzer. It's a giant freaking cannon that you put in holes in enemy ships with. Now, um, I always use gimbaled because they auto track and they will auto lead your shots, so it makes it really easy to just pop them off. Um, and I feel like the damage out you get out of them is pretty good, so I definitely do enjoy using these. Uh, next, oh no, there's one more. There's the fragment cannon, which is uh, ship size shotguns. So their damage is not really good unless you are literally just on their butt and uh, you have a clear shot. Otherwise, in my opinion, these are garbage. So I wouldn't even waste your time with them. So now we'll go into the thermal kinetic weapons. Now what these are is these fire both thermal and... Oh, I'm sorry. They do both thermal and kinetic damage, meaning they do damage to shields and they do damage to hull. Um, so the railgun, there, there are two. There's the railgun and then there's plasma. But railgun is instantaneous and um, it's relatively high damage. Personally, I don't like them. Um, I haven't used them a whole lot, but I don't like... And these only come in fixed, by the way. Uh, Railguns and plasma only come in fixed mounts, which is probably why I dislike them. But other than that, their damage is ridiculous. And the fact that they do extra damage to shields and hull is a very, very good thing. So if you have the skill or if you have a light ship, um, then it's totally worth, worth dabbling in and seeing if you enjoy it. Um, then we have the Plasma Accelerator, which is the highest damage weapon in the game. Um, I've used these a lot. I enjoy using them. Um, contrary to what I said about not liking fixed weapon mounts, but they are really, really powerful. And I use them mostly when I'm in conflict zones, hitting big ships like Anacondas, Pythons, etc. Alright, so that is a rundown of the weapons. So I'm going to back out of that. And now I'm not going to go into every single mount you can get f on your um, on your internal compartments in the internal tab because that gets convoluted very quickly. And there are not very many things you need in there that are not job specific like mining or bounty hunting or trading, etc. So I will just give a brief overview. No, this is new. The planetary approach is sweet. So I haven't played this since the Horizons came out. So there's a whole bunch of new things that have been added. And so I assume that to even use this planetary approach suit, a uh, suite, you uh, you need to have the Elite Dangerous Horizons to play it. Anyway, bulkheads. This is your armor. There are multiple different things. You can get here. Reinforced is always good. I usually use military grade composite. That's now that's basically paying double what you originally paid for your ship, but it gives you an insane amount of protection, so you don't just melt like paper. Then you have uh, mirrored, which does extra. Um, it gives you much more resistance to laser weapons. So if your shields pop and your opponents are using um, a lot of lasers, this is definitely a good um, a good way of negating that. Then there's reactive surface composite, and this is basically what mirror does for thermal. It gives you a high resistance to kinetic damage. So um, more or less to save myself money, I usually just go with the military grade composite because most people will use a either all lasers or B, they will use, players at least, players will almost always use all, all lasers if they are um, bounty hunting or uh, flying in combat zones. Um, but uh, bots or the NPCs will use both. They don't really care. I, I believe it's all random. They get random ships, random weapons, random everything. So, so that's that. Power plant. Power plant is how your... <laughs> This is the heart of your ship. The better the power plant, the more uh, performance you get out of your ship. So 
by maxing your getting the highest end power plant you get you give yourself the most available amount of power possible to that ship now the highest grade power plant is not available at the space station but there are still high-end options here and when I say the highest available amount for your ship I mean you have several main power distributions you have uh, ship you have systems and you have uh, weapons and um, depending on how much you put into those as you're actually flying your ship which I will probably do in another tutorial um, you get increased performance and this enhances that greatly especially if you're doing all laser weapons because it draws directly from your um, power plant so the higher end the power plant and um, power distributor the longer you will be able to continuously fire your energy weapons and this also will um, if you put your distribute your power into engines then this will make you super maneuverable super quick etc so power plant power distributor those in my mind are almost the most important part of your ships thrusters these will increase turn rate and um, ability to, for your lateral thrusters to push um, so you have top side bottom back front mounted thrusters this just makes those more effective frame shift this makes it so you can jump farther um, or you can jump farther to farther systems than um, than your default I definitely recommend using this because it gets super annoying making more like more than twice the amount of jumps than not upgrading it gets very tedious and frustrating so I definitely recommend it, um, upgrading those sensors just will tell you um, they'll give you more forewarning they will detect ships sooner um, if ships are off or trying to stealth themselves by shutting off systems that helps increase your ability to detect that so those are good but I don't they're not a necessity to upgrade so then you have fuel tank you need these you have cargo racks you should have some of those um, shield generator pretty self-explanatory the more high grade the system the harder it is to take out your shields and typically excuse me and typically the um, the faster they come back online after getting taken off so with that that concludes my explanation of the hard points and in internal uh, livery like I said this is all just cosmetic this is nothing that affects your ship's performance but in the next video I will probably be doing um, flying landing asking for permission to dock navigating the different navigating the different sections of space and with that I will go ahead and end the video